Hi everyone, Nova here again from Brighter Outlook Counselling Service with this week's live stream narcissistic abuse recovery question, answer and support session. Thank you for joining me here tonight everyone. It's wonderful to have you here uh, as always. Um, it seems like an eternity since I've, I did this last time um, simply because I had that, that week off last week but I'm so happy to be back tonight and tonight we're very very lucky to have David DeMars um, and he'll be joining us very very shortly and I'll let him in as soon as I see him. David will be co-hosting the show. Now as many of you know I am a professional counsellor on the north side of Brisbane and I my area of expertise is in helping victims to overcome the trauma of narcissistic abuse and to uh, I guess move on with the strategies um, to be able to heal from this type of um, just horrendous abuse um, and also a lot of the time to, to actually break away and break those trauma bonds that keep us not in love which is what a lot of us mistake when we when we cannot stay away from our abuser but to break the addiction which is what trauma bonding is all about so um, yeah that's my job is to uh, um, counsel people in their narcissistic abuse recovery so if you would like to have a private session with me please just inbox me here and I would love to be able to support you on your healing journey and already we've got Jessica Marie there from Perth so she missed me last week oh Jessica I'm I miss doing it too, but it's wonderful to be back tonight and it's fantastic to have you here uh, as well. And we've got Aletha Goodrick says, Hi Nova and David from Redcliffe, Queensland. Oh my goodness, Aletha, how hot has it been? I don't know what it's like in Perth, Jessica, but in Brisbane, it is, we, yeah, we've been having a heat wave and it's just horrendous at the moment. Um, so yeah, it's, it hasn't been good. Okay, so I can see David here already, so I'm going to let David in. And... Hopefully this all goes to plan, David. Bring David on. See Daddy, so I'm hoping it's adding. <laughs> Where you at, David? Hang out. There he is. Hey David, how are you going? Hello, Nova. Good. How are you? I'm good. I thought you might have stood me up for a while there. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm just taking <laughs> my time. You're just taking your time. That's my job. I'm the woman here. Yeah, that's right. I can be fashionably <laughs> late too. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, um, Dave, we've got a few people here already, so I'm just going to say hi yeah. to Okay, so we've got... Uh, yeah, so hello to Jessica Marie. We've got Aletha here. We've got um, Donna Rose Kirby um, says, hi, so need this tonight. Um, thank you. I'm glad to see you here, Donna. Um, we've got Jen Miguel here. Um, she says, I'm the first time viewer from Canoga Park, California. Oh, my goodness. Well, uh, lovely to have you here, Jen. And um, hopefully you'll get lots out of these, um, these live streams with myself and David. Um, and Jan says she's so excited. We're excited to have you here. Absolutely. Okay. We've got Donna Phil Kelly here. Says hi, Nova. Um, from Victoria, Australia. Nay Cece says hi. Nay Cece says hi, David. <laughs> uh, we've got Angel Rose Kneeling. She says you two rock. Thank you, Angel. There's nothing like being told that you rock. <laughs> I love that. Thank you. Um, We've got Emma, Heidi Boyce in here says hi, Tara Jade. Ah, uh, Kay, Kay JJ says um, hi, Nova Kylie here. Hi, Kay. And we've got DJ Brooklyn um, says rock on, beautiful people. Oh, thank you, DJ. And thank you all so much for joining us here tonight. Now, before David and I, I guess, we start on, on the topic that we thought we'd talk about tonight, guys, I just want to reiterate that once again, it's a public page. So, yeah, get asked every now and then, is this private? No, this is not one of those uh, closed, you know, support groups that you might be a part of. Um, so if, if you haven't got your privacy settings really high, people can see what you write. So just make sure they're, they're really high and or have a pseudonym account. Um, and, yeah, you, you can still be private and on a public page. I just think you, you need to ensure that your, your privacy settings are, you know, very acute. Uh, the other thing is, yeah, just comment your questions um, 
below, guys. We, we do ask that you can like and share. Um, sharing helps us to get the word out there and David and I are all about spreading awareness about narcissistic abuse. So please um, please share if, if you can. And, um, and, yeah, just comment your questions below and David and I will answer as many as we possibly can. So, David, what, what are we talking about tonight? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll introduce the topic and then I'll, I'll start first. And then um, basically... I think it'd be good to talk about, keep it a little general maybe, but leaving the narcissist, you know, whether it's an escape plan, um, how to, uh, and reasons why, you know, we sometimes we need to know some good reasons why. So I think it'd be good, I don't know about you, but I think it'd be good to maybe start with some excuses that that we have, that reasons we don't leave. Yeah, right? I, I think, I think it'd that'd be, be a good place to start. Yeah. yeah. So I think the biggest excuse that, that seems to make the most sense, and, and I think that my opinion personally is, is and I think you share it too, yeah. is for parents, parents with children. And, and it seems to be the hardest, and anything that has to do with children is more sensitive and stuff, but um, leaving a narcissist when you have children, you share children, is it tends to be the number one reason why people don't. And... Uh, for me, it, it seems it should be the number one reason why you should. That's yeah. my opinion. So yeah, yeah and um, but I understand I'm not a parent, so so I, I don't I definitely don't judge any parents that don't. Um, I know it's a it's probably a difficult situation to be in, but um, I think it's important to to talk about this to discuss why it's important to leave an abuser when you have children, and yeah. um, I think. I think mothers and fathers are both confused about um, the children need both parents and, and that's why I'm going to stay together. But when there's abuse, it, it doesn't serve the children at all, the, uh, you know, at all. It, 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 two parents, three parents, five parents, doesn't matter. When there's abuse, it doesn't help. And I, and I, and I, and I see that as being the number one reason why people stay in abusive yeah. relationships. Yeah, oh, look, I, I totally agree, David. I guess there's so many things that, uh, so many variables there that keep, you know, in our parents, uh, the I guess the victims um, enmeshed still and, and you know, staying in these abusive relationships. Um, and one of the, the number one things I found, uh, I know there's a myriad of them, but one of the, the, the big things is, is financial abuse. I mean, as we know, you know, the, the perpetrator, the, the narcissist, um, and normally it starts under the guise of caring. You know, I'll take care, care of your finances, you know. You just you just do what you do and I'll take that work off you. And sooner or later they, they've, you know, tied everything up in their name. Perhaps the, um, you know, a lot of, I don't know, a lot of stay-at-home mothers have this where they're not, they don't have any access you know, to, to that person's um, money that's coming into the house. They've put on an allowance, you know, and everything's in the, the abuser's name. Now, as much as that, that parent wants to get out of, of the abusive relationship, it's kind of, you know, you've got to weigh up the, 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 the horrible things that will happen to them. If they, if they stay in the abuse, they obviously suffer all the repercussions of being with that abusive parent. If they leave... You know, perhaps the kids will have to give up their soccer, their netball, their piano. They'll have to change schools. Perhaps they'll have to live in a tent. You know, and and that that um, secure that insecurity of not knowing, you know, where the next centre is going to come from. And I guess that financial abuse is just it's it's just horrendous. The you know just not knowing how you're going to support your kids. And I think that's a, a big reason, isn't it, that a lot of these people stay. In, um, in these relationships, among, you know, many other reasons. Yeah, I mean, when it gets that, when it gets to that point, it's a good reason, right? You don't have any money. So, and, and I think a lot of people don't realize that we've done videos on financial abuse and exploitation and it, yeah. it, it an emotionally abusive relationship, it tends to be first. And, yeah. and most people don't realize it's happening. And you have, you know, you've got one, one breadwinner, you know, one person, uh, having all the income, they control all the money. And uh, that's where it went wrong, right from the beginning. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's still an excuse, but we need money to leave, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. 
makes it so hard. Yeah. Um, and I guess the, you know, one of the other big things, David, is, is just the depression. <laughs> you know, when you've been ground down by an abuser, how do you find the strength to get out? Yeah, that's right. I mean, strength, physical strength, it wears you down. But, you know, you've got, you always have in any kind of abusive relationship, you've got guilt and shame, lowers your self-worth, esteem, your your value, you know. These, these are the things you need to make big decisions, big life choices like this and leave. And you don't have it. And, and then we can go on to isolation. Uh, abusers isolate you from the people that care about you. They don't want people to care about you. They don't want people in your ear giving you any kind of uh, sense of reality, reality check, so, uh, and their threats to them. So you, you're often isolated, and that's what you need, support. You need support, you need money, and they keep the money from you, and they isolate you, and it makes it very, very tough to leave. Yeah. And, and this is why they do it. <laughs> they, they know, you know, we, we often hear, oh, do they know what they're doing? You know, surely they can't be, you know, doing all these things intentionally. And absolutely they're doing it intentionally. They know exactly what they're doing. And all of this is manufactured over a period of time so that you won't leave to keep you there. And it often works until we can give, you know, people the strategies to get out and, and reasons for getting out. That's right. You know, they've had relationships before you and they've had people telling them about them, warning them, I'm sure. Yeah. So they're used to it. They're prepared for it. They're waiting for it. So they isolate you from any kind of that, any kind of help you can get. Yeah. 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 Okay. So um, what, what other reasons are there, David, that we've kind of been through, I guess? Um, I mean, reasons to not leave, reasons that keep the victims there. What, what other sorts of things are there? Yeah, often uh, belongings. Belongings is, is, is a big thing. Uh, we don't want to throw away their stuff, and they hold on to our stuff, and it's just a foot in the door. And and I have to sometimes with clients, I have to out you know measure that. Say, well, do does a you know a few jackets, shirts, and pants weigh out six more months or six more years of abuse? Yeah. Let it go. I mean, we have to count our losses. And it's, it's amazing what some people will lose in a relationship and then what they're afraid to give up at the end of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's such, that's such a good point, isn't it? It's like some people, you know, at, at, when they finally come to terms with the fact and often, you know, they had that light bulb moment where they've been doing lots of good oh. and they've been like, Oh my goodness, you know, my whole life's kind of been a sham. I've been, I've been living with a narcissist and I didn't even know it. And there's the, the anger sets in you know and that you know I, I don't want to give up you know I put a lot of work into to making this home beautiful and and you know this person won't leave well I'm not bunching because why should I I wasn't the one that cheated you know and this this anger sets in but I guess that's when the times when you know you really have to talk it out and work out that you have to balance up you know what those possessions what those things are worth when you compare them to I guess your emotional and you know your your psychological and your physical health, which as we know, deteriorates the longer you suffer all of those symptoms, you know, like anxiety, PTSD, things like that. That's right. And and I mean any relationship requires investment. So as you invest in these relationships with, with your time, your energy, your thought, your feelings, your heartache, all this stuff, it's hard to leave. It's extremely yeah. hard to leave. And, and these are toxic relationships, which require even more investment. More investment. They're 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 not they're not offering anything. It's all you. Yeah, and and you're again, all in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess we shouldn't forget, you know, that that the memories, you know, people make, and, and you, as we know, we you know with cognitive dissonance, they hold on to those just the good times. And, you know, that, that are symbolic of, you know, what they did together and the, you know, the home and, and things that they had to jointly and, and own together in the home. And, the, you know, the thought of just giving that, giving those memories away and all that time they invested into the relationship is, is really, really hard. Yeah, sure. And, and there's such an addictive element or component to this. Um, the more you've invested you know, we call it trauma bonding. So the trauma, the ups and downs, we get addicted to this, believe it or not. 
and it's extremely hard to give it up like a drug. And just like a drug, the first the first hit was the best, and 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 you you chase that. You want that first time, and uh, we hold on to it. And a lot of people aren't even consciously aware of that they're holding on to this hope, to this the good times. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the good times were in the beginning, right away in the beginning, when when people weren't scared, there, we weren't uh, insecure, we didn't mind, you know, being open and honest and stuff like this. So um, we hold on to those good times and in our mind, and it could be years later. After the relationship ends, we hold on to that good time. It's going to be like that again. Yeah. 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 And, and it never will be. It never will be. The only thing that victims will see again of those those illusionary good times were breadcrumbs that the yeah. uh, that the narcissist throws out, you know, like, like trying to reel a bird in to, to hook you back into the abuse. And that's the only time that they will see because the the, the abuse will come back a hundredfold the minute you step back into their into their cage. Yeah, that's right. And I, I think the beginning is the only time that you'll anywhere see them being vulnerable at all. You know, just in the beginning, because they aren't invested yet. They can they can allow themselves to be a little vulnerable in the beginning and then it and then never again. Yeah. 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 Okay. So okay, so I guess that's there's some of the reasons victims stay. They stay in the abusive relationship and it's it's so easy to understand why they do. Now, let's talk about how and why they should leave these abusive relationships. Well, the first reason I gave children, uh, I, it's it's imperative that we that we leave and we begin this process. And then, you know, being a victim of this stuff, it, it causes black and white thinking. So often I'll, I'll, ha I'll, I'll talk to people who it's it's either I stay or it's or it's this and and this is always worse than staying and you know it's it's we've got to start this process we can't allow abuse so it's got to start there it's got to stop it's got to stop and we've got to start this process you've got to look out for number one and yeah. if you really want to care about your children then mom and dad need to be healthy you know, if you're a mother or a father, you need to be healthy first. And the best way to be the best mom or best dad is, is be a, the best healthy person. Uh, yeah. And we need somebody with a clear state of mind, a healthy state of mind. Know what's going on if the other person's abusing. And uh, if you're in abuse, if you're in an abusive relationship, you are not completely conscious and aware of what's going on. You, you can't be. You can't yeah. be. You're lying to yourself sometimes. And that's you're why, you know. Yeah, and that's why everyone around you viewing this is telling you, this is horrible, get out. And you're kind of like, yeah, I know it's bad, but, you know, I'll leave someday and whatever. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're not aware I, of that it isn't. yeah, you have to, as you just said, you have to get out to see just how bad it was. Otherwise, you're living in that fog, that that yeah. that fog of fear, obligation and guilt. And, yeah, like I, I explained to um, a lot of people who come to see me, it's like, if you imagine yourself living in a home with, um, you know, a, a gas leak that was around all the time and you just felt yuck and then you left that house and all of a sudden, you know, you you drunk cool, clean water and you, you breathed in fresh air and then you look back and you go, wow, I was really sick, but I didn't know it. Um, that's, that's what it's like. When you're in the midst of it, you can't see just how abusive is it. And, it is, and you minimise it, and you justify the abuse, and you rationalise the abuse because you have to survive. And of course, with the the black and white thinking you were talking about, um, it's either or. It's I do or I don't, and it's it seems it's just too hard to even contemplate trying to you know make it. And it seems like the easier, better thing for the kids to stay. You know? That's right. And in our brains, the reason humans don't like change is because our brains care about one thing and that's keeping us alive. Whatever I've done, if I'm alive today, then anything I've done works. Our brain are gonna keep repeating itself and doing the same thing over and over and over again because it's kept you alive this long. It doesn't matter yeah. if it's been good or happy or even healthy, it's kept you alive. So your brain's gonna keep saying, do the same thing. Yeah, it's a hard yeah. time to break. Yeah. 
Um, just going back to the, the um, like being able to get out and, and um, having, I guess, the, you know, the mental and the emotional strength to do that. One big thing, and I know I've spoken about this before, um, I did a live stream with, with my daughter, Courtney. Uh, she um, has her own family law practice here in Brisbane um, at Petrie on the north side of Brisbane. Um, guys, if please call Courtney if you're looking for a lawyer. She's very experienced with domestic violence victims. But um, Courtney and I spoke a lot about uh, the fact that it really has to be the you know, besides getting therapy, it really has to be the number one thing that you do and probably the hardest thing you do is to get some kind of legal advice uh, because the narcissist, just the very nature of their disorder, they will have been preempting the discard for so long. They will be getting all their ducks in a row and the fact that you, they will be relying on the fact that you are mentally worn down, you're exhausted, you're, you know, you're just a shell, not able to, you know, to cope with, with you know, the, your, where you found yourself and that's what they rely on by building all their resources up. So, yeah, I think this is an imperative thing that guys need to do when they're leaving these relationships is get some kind of legal advice so because if you don't you will regret it they will regret it won't they david somewhere down the line because the narcissist will be and they will um yeah they, they need to secure their future for them and for the children that's right and when it comes to legal matters you know most of it doesn't care about your emotions how you feel what you want um you, you got to go by the law you got to go by the books so you can really uh, cause some damage by making the wrong decisions in haste you know when you're upset <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and most countries offer some kind of uh, free legal advice, at least. Yeah, and I, I think legal counsel when it comes to divorces out there, and you know where you can, you know, I know on the north side of Brisbane, you can go to a, a community centre here and get some kind of, um, you know, point in the right direction as to to what you need to do. But without that legal advice, you know, if, if you don't get it, I mean, I spoke to one lady not long ago, and she was in the most horrific abusive relationship and she was being manipulated so badly by a husband who, who had agreed to the divorce and he'd also managed to get her into a me some kind of uh mediation together where they were going to sort all she hadn't sought any legal advice no independent legal advice whatsoever and he had got into her into some kind of meeting where they were going to settle uh because he had convinced her that you know it was all well, it was best to leave lawyers out of it. You know, they're only going to take all their money, uh, you know, that, that kind of um, uh, manipulation. And I just said, you go get yourself your own lawyer because you can't, you're just going to really do yourself a, a disservice and this is just not on. But because they're so ground down, their self-esteem is so uh, low. And I think we've also got to acknowledge the fact that even when this time comes where the divorce is imminent and the, the, the breakup is imminent, victims don't often want to actually believe it. They think, you know, there's so, still some kind of hope that their partner will change, you know, and if they just do what they want, if they're just a good girl or a good boy and they do everything that the narcissist wants, that they might be nice to them and they might, you know, be able to get back together and, and tie, you know, smooth things over. And, um, yeah, I think there's always, a, well, not always, but a, lo a lot of the time there's still that element there that some, somehow, you know, something magical will happen and, they'll, you know, the, the water will part and they'll get back together. Yeah, of course. And it, you need self-worth to ask for help. I see all too often people need help, legal help, and they don't go get it. And it's not even about the money. It's like uh, they don't feel worthy enough to ask for help. Yeah, it's really sad. Yeah, I mean, I mean if, you, if you enter these relationships, then your self-worth has to be somewhere down here, not, not where it should be. Um, yeah. So the feelings of I'm not good enough, well, you'll battle when you're dealing with divorce. I'm not good enough. So I, maybe I can be better. Who wants to admit defeat and throw away something you've invested in for years? It's, it's extremely difficult. Yeah, and I think so the, the finality of it, uh, the fear of, you know, perhaps running into, you know, their abuser. But I guess what do we what we want to reiterate really is that this is something that is so incredibly important that, that they must do, isn't it? And that getting out needs to be something not just for them, 
but for their kids as well. Because as you said earlier, the kids want, the kids don't want mum and dad staying un under the same roof when you can cut the atmosphere with a knife and the the atmosphere is is just horrible you know the children blame themselves and it's just it's it's terrible and they have two parents that are emotionally unavailable they want at least one appropriate parent who is happy and and this is what i guess these victims need to understand is you can't be happy with the narcissist you cannot ever be happy but one day when you leave them you have the chance of happiness and you will That's be right. happy. Right. Yeah. You're not healthy. You're not happy if you're, if you're living with your abuser and children can't see that children are learning every day. They're learning everything you do. Um, watching your children, watching you two interact is, is what they believe love is. You're teaching them. That's what love is fighting, yeah. no respect, crossing boundaries, hitting, arguing, you know, all these things. So uh, you, you're Silent setting treatment. an example. Silent treatments, you know, not talking, uh, mum and dad not talking to each other for weeks at a time. Like that's all love. Abuse. They're witnessing abuse and they're learning that that's what love is. And that's what you're teaching. They have no, nothing else to compare it to. Um, yeah. So you're setting an example no matter what you're doing. Um, and, you know, I, I hear this a lot and, and it's sad. I hear mothers say, I'm staying in the marriage because I can, I can prevent my children from being abused as much. I can control them. I can be around. They won't abuse. My husband won't abuse the children with me around as much. And it's you're not saving anybody. You can't. You're not. You're not stopping the abuse. And mom is sick too. They have no stability. Yeah. 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 It's got to yeah, start. Yeah. It's got to stop. And you got to start the process. Don't be afraid. It's got. It's got to yeah. stop. Yeah. And it's going to be scary. And I think that's the thing that to, to let everyone know that this is not going to be easy. It's going to be the hardest thing they've ever done, but it is so worth it. But they are going to have to dip, jump out of that safety zone. It's, it's kind of like better the devil you know to stay in that, in that trauma zone, the abusive zone, better the devil you know, but uh, you're going to have to um, summon up the strength to, to jump out of that little safety zone and into the clean, fresh air because your life cannot get better and the kids will not be happy while you're in that, that trauma zone. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think uh, you, know, you have to make a commitment to the, your children's future and your future. Um, <clears throat> one thing is important and, and I stress this all the time is professional help, but also, you know, telling your friends and family you're leaving this person it helps. It holds you accountable. Um, you know, whether you do it or not, telling your friends and your family, having a, uh, a professional, a counselor of some kind or a life coach there to talk to every week, it holds you accountable for these things. You know, I know I'm going to leave, you know, next Tuesday. Well, if you have a counselor meeting Wednesday, you know, you have to go tell your counselor, I didn't leave them yesterday, you know. So it holds you accountable. These are good things. It's just like quitting an addiction and this is an addiction or it could be for most of you mm -hmm. so you tell people i'm quitting i'm done today's my last day it holds you accountable it's a really good thing to do tell yeah. people yeah. rather than just having it up here you know and in, in yeah. um, get amongst the fog make it make it real put it out there yeah something yeah. to strive for yeah right right Okay, David, we've got, I can see we've got lots of questions, so um, we might start answering a few questions. So guys, please um, talk amongst yourselves because we it's impossible, as I say, to get around to, to answering everyone. So, yeah, please talk to each other. You provide such a wonderful support to each other, and that's, that's one of the beautiful things about these live streams. Okay. So we've got, who have we got that I'm so low to? We've got Emma Heidi Boynton there. Hi, Emma. Uh, Tara Jade's here, KJJ. Uh, oh, I think I've said hello to you. have got Holly Dane here. Um, hi, Holly. Uh, t -t 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 Tara J says, left six months ago after 17 years for the second time and the last. Woohoo! <laughs> Good for you, Tara. They are inspiring words for everyone else. And, um, yeah, 17 years is an incredibly long time. Uh, but we, we all know why, but, but you're out now. And the fact that you've actually made that clear that it's the last time is really, really inspiring. And I'm so, so proud of you. Yeah. Awesome. Good job. And, 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 and mark, mark your, your, your progress, 
right? It's been six months, he said, you should be feeling better, doing better, learning, understanding more, mark these progresses. A lot of people don't do that. A lot of people will sit there six months later and say, I still have bad days. It's like, yeah, but they're, they're far and few between, aren't they? You're, you're feeling better, you're getting better. Yeah. That's not a great idea. Yeah, get a calendar out. Mark off every every day, you know, that's a good day that um, that puts that space between you and your abuser. And then reward yourself, you know, that at, at the end of a, a week, month, whatever it is. But make it, you know, let yourself see your progress. Yeah, rate, rate yourself every day and see that those numbers get higher and higher over, over a course of time. Absolutely. Uh, we've got Daryl McMaster here. This uh, sounds like you were talking about my ex-wife. Um, yeah, they, they're often, everyone's stories are so, so similar, Daryl, and it's kind of like the narcissist carries a textbook around with them. Um, and Tara Jade says the same thing. Wow, sounds like my life all over. Uh, Donna uh, Phil Kelly says, make an account without other person's name regardless of the negativity that may come your way. A lot of people, even married, have, have separate accounts. And you know what? I'm all for that. <laughs> what about you, David? You know, once upon a time, um, many, many years ago, I would have thought, well, you know, um, if you're going to get married, you know, join it all together. But I, I certainly don't feel that way anymore in light of, you know, um, my my profession. And, um, yeah, I, I see no issue in, in having, you know, your independence with your own accounts. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, financial independence and financial autonomy. Um, you know, these these are needs we have to have in relationships, and and you and to feel secure, it's also about financial security too. So yeah. um, you got to look out for yourself. We talked about this in our video about about this financial exploitation, and um, yeah, finances should be kept somewhat separate. Yeah, you should each have money available. Things like this, yeah. Or you're gonna find yourself in situations where, when you need help, you don't you don't have it. It's not there. You can't yeah. do that to yourself. You're responsible for that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've got Karen Connor there. Hi, Karen. We've got uh, Belinda Zamet says. Belinda says, I left in September 2018 after 23 years. Oh, good for wow. you, Belinda. Amazing. Um, in the end, it was my kids begging me that made me leave. Yeah, o often it is. We need that, um, I guess, just that that extra kick kick along, don't we, by by someone else, and namely our, our children, to let us know that hey, this is this is not doing us any good, and we actually want you to go. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that comment. That shows right there that that kids know leave. They don't want you to stay in that stuff. Yeah. Not good for them. Yeah. That's exactly right. Uh, Karen Connors is here and Karen says, uh, can we touch on silent treatment? Sure. Uh, okay, why, why do uh, narcissists use the silent treatment? David? It's a common, well, common tactic they use, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's abuse. Um, I don't think, I think they choose to, but I, I, on the other hand, I don't think they have the capacity or capabilities to uh, to to do the alternative, the healthy thing, to talk about it, to be vulnerable, open up, say I have a problem with this, I feel this way. Can you please? Um, we know that they don't do this. So yes. silent treatment as, as as an abuse control tactic, but they don't have the capacity. This is where it, it, it's evident that they can't have relationships, right? Functional relationships. This is why they they won't yes. talk. They won't be vulnerable. Normal, they won't be vulnerable. People can sit down and have a discussion that revolves around win-win, okay? Win-win, um, even if it's just we come to a compromise, whereas with a narcissist, it's always win-lose. Now, if they know that you've hit on something and you want to discuss something that's that's poignant or, you know, something about their behaviour uh, that's going to expose them in some way, then they'll, they'll shut off to punish you. So that's another reason, uh, Karen, is just to flat out, punish you because how much does that hurt when someone won't talk to us that's why you know as david said it's abuse when someone says i'm not talking to you uh you know they, they spit the dummy they walk off they go you know give you the silent treatment that is abuse and it's to punish you uh because you were getting close or you were you're starting to expose them 
And, um, yeah, and, and it also because you know, they don't have the capacity to discuss anything, do they, David? Because it's always about win, lose. They win, you lose. And um, if they don't want to talk about anything where they there's just the slightest possibility they may lose, they will give you the silent treatment. And it's also a very manipulative tactic to to go and do what they, they want to do, isn't it? It's like um, I'll start up an argument about nothing, you know, you, you might have just looked at them in, in the wrong way or they perceive it that way. So they'll start up an argument so they can leave, give you the silent treatment and go do whatever they, that it is that they want to do. But it's just it's right. manipulation and, and punishment. Yeah, that, That's right. I mean, what's the alternative? Look at why they do it, right? They, they can't, you know, uh, maybe they should be saying, you hurt me. Um, I'm scared. Uh, please, please don't do that. Please, you know what I mean? These kinds of things. Give me what I want, please. So they don't do that, do they? No, right? They abuse you. They, they, they knock you down. They control you. They upset you. They make you cry. They scare you. They, yeah. So silent, silent treatment is, is a form of abuse. It's a control tactic and uh, it, it can be very traumatic at the right time. Yeah. yeah. And, and with regard to, to the punishments, you know, giving out the silent treatments because it is, it, it is so damaging and, it, you know, it makes you feel so bad, especially when you are trauma bonded. Um, it makes, it's, it's a manipulative tactic, uh, Karen, in that next time you as a victim um, think about addressing some kind of topic that you know they might get funny about or you know might make them angry, you think twice about it. You go, oh, no, last time I brought that up, they didn't talk to me for two weeks. So it teaches you. It teaches the victims, conditions them to not raise any areas that they have every right to talk about because they will get punished with the silent treatment, which is really unbearable if they if they try and do that. So it's it's conditions victims to not talk about any of their of you know the issues they have with the narcissist in the future. That's right. It's all part of that push pull game, that tactic. Push pull, push pull. So I'm gonna walk away and make you chase me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, Jen McGuell's here and she says, a lot of people stay because we are afraid of being alone. So we accept how they treat us and it deteriorates uh, what we are as a person. Yeah. And, and I guess that's, that's a thing, isn't it, David? Because but the, the, the loneliness and, and the, your thoughts around I'm alone if I'm not with someone all stem from their abuse and, and this is the way they want you to feel, whereas you are alone. When you're with the narcissist, you are alone. You, but you can be um, alone by yourself in your own company but not lonely. When you're with a narcissist, you are both. You are alone and you're lonely, but people are taught the condition, aren't they, David, by the narcissist that they will never make it without them, that they, that, you know, um, that they need them to survive, and this is all part of the brainwashing. Yeah, right. It's dependency, isn't it? And, and this is evidence that there's no autonomy. You must have autonomy in a relationship. You have to. You have to have yourself. And uh, like I was saying before, if you invest everything, you have and don't leave anything for yourself, then you don't have a self left. Yeah. 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 Pretty hard so, to walk away from a relationship when uh, you've given everything away. You have nothing there. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I really want you to think about that, Jen. Uh, you, you are alone. When you're with a narcissist, you are alone all the time. Uh, and, you know, you you have the chance of learning to love your own company and never being lonely again if you leave them, but you will always be alone while you're with them. They can be in the same bed as you and you'll still be alone because they're not present for you, for your emotional needs and for support. And then this is how trauma uh, induces black and white thinking. It's either this or this, two doors, one door in our life, and you have to keep creating more doors and opening them. You know, there's always more options. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we've got Cheryl uh, Fitz there. Hi, Cheryl. Uh, Donna Rose Kirby's there. Hi, Donna. Uh, Donna says, my narc went to jail. Do they change once they are released? Do you want to answer that, David? 
Well, that, that's such a subjective term. Uh, change, change what? Change their clothes? Change yeah. their uh, change who they are? Because something people need to under, understand with personality disorders is this is not a disease, so there's no cure. Yeah, personality I think disorders. I think that's what Donna was meaning. I think that's what most people mean when they say, will they change it's still like that? Will they go back to that nice person? You know, they were at, at, at some stage. Yeah. yeah, with someone else. Sad to say, yeah. Mm -hmm. They'll try so, it with someone else until they, get, until they get attached, until they invest, until things start going wrong for them, yeah. Yeah, um, so that, no, there is no cure. Yeah. Um, Donna, but anytime they, someone claims, anytime somebody, guys, anytime someone claims I've changed who I am, right? Uh, find, ask yourself why, how, things like this. You know, more than just I found God, uh, I read a book, uh, I met a person, I'm dating the right person. So that, how can that change completely who you are? Well, why? You know, look at what you guys are doing to change your lives. What have they done? Right? Aren't they more messed up than you? They got personality disorders. What did they do to change? Well, why are they better? Why won't they abuse you now? What happened? They went to jail. You know, I, I don't I don't know how that could change somebody. I, I and I, you know, of course it could change somebody, but will it make them not abuse you anymore? Will it make them healthy? Why? What happened in jail? To make them do that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, if if you're wondering if they'll change from, you know from being an abusive uh, narcissist, no, they won't. They will not change because there is no cure, Donna. Um, okay, we've got Tracy Croft there. Hi, Tracy. Tracy says, blessing survivors, victims and teachers. Just went to police today. Four years later, I need, to, I need no contact help. I need help to get out of the cycle. I'm worried to see him in court. This hurts, um, hurting the one Oh, just lost the rest of your question there. Keep losing it. Ah. Hurting the one. Uh, I'm worried to see him in court. This hurts. Hurting the one you love, but they don't know love. It's um, fried my mind. Yeah. Um, look, just, I guess, going contact is really hard when you haven't worked out you know, strategies around the trauma bonding um, and the fact that you're still saying, you know, uh, um, you're worried to see me in court, this hurts hurting the one you love. Are you talking about him, the narcissist? Because um, you, you can't love someone who abuses you. And I know this is really hard to get your head around because you pine for them, you crave for them, you, the thought of being without them makes you sick and you equate this with love, but this love is basically withdrawal. So the love, what you think is love is withdrawal from, from your drug. Um, so you're not hurting someone, as you said, because they can't be hurt. They don't have those emotions to be hurt. Um, so I know it's going to be hard, but um, just get all the support you can around you and batten down, that, down those hatches to go no contact. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, uh, I, I hope you can hear that, that you're actually just doing something for yourself, the best thing, the healthiest thing for yourself, and you believe that's hurting him. That's what you're concerned about. Um, that shows the, the kind of investment that you've made in this relationship. Um, so you've got to take care of yourself. The repercussions from that are the repercussions from that, but you've got to take care of yourself. And you're not, you're not hurting him, even though it will hurt him. You are yourself and he is himself. And you are responsible for yourself, not him, okay? He's responsible for himself, even though you've taken that responsibility throughout the relationship. Yeah. You assume that responsibility, but it's not yours. Your responsibility is you. Is you, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Okay, we've got uh, Pristine Kylie there. Hi, Pristine. Um, she's replying to Donna, says, um, they have to want to change. There are programs in jail, but then they have to be honest to themselves in the program to change. Yeah, great words of advice there, Pristine. And um, as we know, uh, David, the one thing a narcissist can never, ever do is be honest to themselves. To be honest to themselves is to be able to self-reflect, be able to turn that 
that insight to, to be able to have insight and you know turn that um, the the reflections inward and they just they can't do that so anything that they would they would speak about in jail and counselling would be insincere uh, because they they don't think that there's anything wrong with themselves and they have no desire to change. Yeah, I mean, uh, people can change behaviors, maybe even thought patterns, but you're asking someone to change who they are. That's why yeah. their personality is disordered. Um, it, it can happen. People can change these things, sure. Um, but but quit holding on to hope. I, I just, if somebody abused you, that relationship is completely over. There's no saving an, an abusive relationship. I don't think so. Yeah, my opinion too. Okay, uh, we've got Shelly there. Hi, Shelly. Uh, Shelly uh, Whiteley says, Courtney is amazing. Courtney, uh, I was just speaking about Courtney earlier on, everyone. Courtney's my daughter. She um, has her own law firm. She's a, um, a practicing family lawyer, has her own law firm here in Brisbane. And um, Shelly says, Courtney is amazing with legal advice and help with all legal aspects of divorce, domestic violence, DVOs, uh, spousal support, children's issues, definitely recommend Courtney at Barton Family Lawyers. There you go. So you've, you've got someone who's actually been to see um, Courtney and, um, yeah, I guess get it, it would just get back to how incredibly important it is to get that, that legal advice before you do anything because you can really, you know, um, um, lose lose so much, lose yourself, lose, lose what you could have in your future if you don't. Yeah. Thank you, Shelley. Uh, da, da, da. Um, Tara Jade says, the system needs to change. The police charged my ex. We went to court three times because we pled not guilty. And then, and then trial and all charges dropped even with video evidence. This is why women are dying, leaving children motherless. Oh, my goodness, Tara. Look, I don't, yeah, I, I, it's really hard to comment, I, I guess, because David and I don't have all the facts in, in front of us. But certainly, yeah, you are so right. The system is, um, yeah, the whole the whole court system, the family law, there needs to be a reform um, and it, it needs it needs so much work because that's just not appropriate. And, um, and yeah, people like you and children are suffering and it certainly needs an overhaul. That's the, you know, the least I can say about our family law system. In fact, in fact I think you all know how I feel about it. Yeah, and it goes both ways too. There's plenty of men being physically abused that never get any help. There's no help out there mm -hmm. for them. Yeah, uh, uh, absolutely. And yeah, I, I guess we, we we do need to stress that um, that there is there's there's definitely men that, that and just as many male certainly male narcissistic abuse victims. I believe it's fifty fifty. Uh, it's just that we don't hear about the men. They don't come forward because there's a um, they're, they're, I guess just the way they're conditioned from society, it's more shameful to talk about your feelings and, you know, getting abused by a woman, you know, that, that type of thing. We don't hear about it, but certainly with regard to narcissistic abuse, it is not gender specific and there is just as many male victims out there. Uh, we just don't, we don't hear about it. And certainly the, the, the whole system needs an overhaul to protect everyone because there's just not enough knowledge out there about personality disorders and the damage that is inflicted and the destruction in lives because, um, you know, the, the police, the, you know, judges, solicitors, um, social workers, mediators. Social media. uh, pardon? So, social media it is encouraging this kind of behaviour. Yeah, yeah. There's just not enough awareness and that's why, you know, well, the reason we do these these live streams is to create that awareness and hopefully implement change. Yeah, totally get it, Tara. Uh, we've got uh, Tash but Bogodunov. Sorry, Tash, not pronounced that wrong. Um, oh, with this, if the victim is working, a lot of companies have um, EPA employee assistance programs, free legal advice, and and psychology. Uh, that's really good and handy to know, um, guys. If any of you have access to that, to uh, 
to EPA is certainly something that you that I guess people do you have that in the states where you can get employee assistance um, and do you know about that David in in your job you can get employee employee assistance to get some kind of legal advice and perhaps psychological help as well counseling yeah there is stuff like that uh, implemented yeah. here there yeah there there's help from the company uh, your uh, state pr will, can provide um, even time off, paid federal time off, things like this, and they'll pay your 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 employer to give you that time off that's necessary. Yeah. From stuff like this, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Thanks for that, Tash. That's really good to know. Um, we've got Angel Rose kneeling there. Hi, Angel. Uh, Angel says, children do see that. Mind you, there was no love, no real love. My son was only 12 with four girls younger and they could all, they all could see what I couldn't. So the children see so much more than we give them credit for. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's great that you've got an awareness around that. And yeah, it, it's true, isn't it, David? They, they see so much more than we think. Yeah. Right. You know, we'll, we'll what, how there's no way to handle abuse around children. So, I mean, what, how can you do that, right? You, you can't stop it. And how are you going to stop it? You're going to argue. You're going to fight. You're going to threaten. You're going to demand. You're not going to love them. You're not going to show affection. These are what you're t teaching your children. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Or, you know, a lot, of, a lot of couples think, oh, but, you know, they're me, but, but we went in our bedroom. You know, we, we shut the door and we argued, you know, behind closed doors. And I guess what they don't understand is the kids know that. It doesn't matter. That it's irrelevant that you're not yelling in front of them, that you're having an argument, even if it's if you're being quiet behind closed doors because the children know. They know right. that mummy and daddy are, are fighting and that they, they're, you know, they don't love each other at the moment. And kids have this ability to blame themselves. You know, oh, I'll go and make mummy a really nice dinner. I'll, you know, I'll go and clean up my room and I'll do all these nice things. And they think they can fix it. They also think it's their fault. Yeah, it's not just children. We do it too as adults. It, all of you that are hurting, all, all this emotional pain you have, you're not understanding what really happened. So children, you, know, you want to go fight in your bedroom. Children don't understand. They don't understand what you're doing. You're not going to explain to them. You're not going to tell them. So they don't understand what happens. They're bad. It's, it's their fault. You're doing this because of them. Sure. Yeah. You're not teaching them how to handle things, how to correct things, how, yeah, how to argue but, correctly. I mean, there is, argue, there is healthy argument, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You could be teaching them to have a win-win discussion in front of them. You know, rather than having you know an argument behind closed rather, door, rather than hurting one another, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, Shelley says hi, Shelley. I agree. The children are better off when the healthy parent is not living with the abuser. Yeah, my children are much happier now after a year of their not father moving out. Yeah, and, and you know that's because they can see that mum is growing and mum's getting, you know, healthier and happier, and mum's not walking on eggshells all the time. You know, waiting for the phone to ring, and um, you know the the kids sense this and they they see that you know they've got a, an appropriate happy parent, and they can only be better off for that. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's important that that you're only healthy because you left. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It would it would not have happened if she had to stay. Hey, yeah, exactly. Uh, we've got Tony O'Brien. He says my kids were four and seven when I left, and their words were "Daddy is a bully." Oh my goodness! Yeah, well, obviously, um, you know, they had a pretty good uh, concept around uh, Tony around um, you know what was going on in your in your home, and um, and they. Yeah, that they it obviously affected them in in a big way for the children that are so young to to be saying things like that. So it's obviously um, a, a wonderful thing that you got out and you left him. Yeah, pretty observant. Yeah. Uh, we've got Monique Anderson there. Hi, Monique. Uh, Monique is watching from Maryland, USA. How are you going, Monique? Thank you for joining in. 
Uh, we've got Jade Miller here, says, hi, Nova and David and everyone watching. Sorry I'm late. Um, love the red chair. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jade. Yeah, I have a, a different colour chair, but you know that, but every, every live stream. Not really. I cheat. But um, thank you very much, and it's good to have you here. Okay. Uh, Angel Rose says, I created a public page for me to write, share, and express things. He stalks that page and hates everything um, I talk about, but it's my way of healing and, and, taking, my, and taking control of me back. Um, yeah, I, I'm just wondering, David, why, why yeah, and Angel, why you haven't blocked him and, and why he's still got access to it. Um, certainly you would be able to heal more. If you knew that he wasn't going to be, you know, posting things that, um, and, and letting you know that he's stalking you, what do you say, Dave? It's almost a form of communication, isn't it? Yeah. I yeah, think you'd be better off if you kept that writing private for a while. Yeah, I think it would be more, um, you know, cathartic for you, Angel Rose, if if you did keep considering he is your abuser, keep him out of it. Um, and I guess it would just be something to ask yourself why, why you haven't blocked him. Um, you know, wh why, why are you allowing him to read your very personal thoughts around the abuse? Just something to think about and kind of analyse why, why you haven't blocked him. But, yeah, I think um, if, it, if it's helping, that's a wonderful thing. But, yeah, really think about uh, denying him access to it. Yeah, you're... Uh... You're you're feeding him. You're you're staying involved in the relationship, kind of. You're, yeah. Uh, yeah. He he's. He, I would imagine he appreciates mm -hmm. the attention and knowing that you care, and you're making your life about him still. Uh, yeah, I'd consider mm -hmm. stopping. I consider making that private for a while so he doesn't even see it, let alone comment. Yeah. 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 Very important, Angel. Okay. Uh, Tracy Croft says, discarding is powerful for them. They are energy vampires. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, and, and that's why why they, I guess, they do discard. Tracy, it's um, to, to punish you, to, they've, they've finished feeding off you. Um, David, haven't they? they? They've drained you of all the supply you can give um, and they need to source out someone new so that they can start. You know, depleting their sources of all, of all their energy. And this is just a cycle. You're part of the cycle. Yeah, I think you've got discard and abandonment. I think there's a little slight difference. I think discard is, you know, I'm done with you and I'm going to throw you away like garbage. Abandon is I'm going to abandon this relationship I've invested in. So sometimes it all feels like discard. Sometimes it's the person running away. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, yeah, discard. Yeah, you're, 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 they've objectified you long enough. They've squeezed everything out of you. They're done. There's nothing left. You're broken. Goodbye. Yeah, goodbye. Yep. No, no cigar, no fat lady singing. Just goodbye. Moving on to the next victim because they are now nice and shiny and full of narcissistic supply, and you are left to. Yeah, to, to wallow and, and marinate in your pain and they have no remorse or empathy whatsoever. It's just Yeah, we, 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 miss our, we miss our old car until it's broken down on the side of the road and doesn't work anymore and we're sitting in that new, bright, shiny car. We don't think of God or care about our old car anymore. Yeah, yeah, that, that's exactly it, isn't it? That we are all just objects. And when we're not shining in you anymore, then we're just, we've gotten rid of. Yeah, a new model. A new one. Upgrade. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, da, 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 da. We've got Rose Knight here. Hi, Rose. Um, Rose says, Nova and David, I was in a marriage for 26 years and I am 10 years away from this relationship. When I saw this page, you guys helped me understand what a narcissist is. Oh my goodness. I feel like you spoke uh, what I have lived for a long time, a breath of fresh air for me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh my goodness. Um, Rose, wow. I'm, yeah. 
this is why David and I do what we do and I'm so proud of you for having left and, and stayed away for 10 years and if you've got something from what David and I do, then that's that just makes our hearts sing and, yeah, we're, we're really happy that you've got something out of it and that we're able to help you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, giving people some hope. 10 yeah. years, wow. wow. Yeah, and that's exactly right. You have given people hope tonight, Rose. Um, so it is possible and some people think, you know, when they're, they're just leaving and it's so, so incredibly painful, they, they just can't see a light at the end of the tunnel and you're, you're inspirational and you're proof that it does happen and you can heal from narcissistic abuse. So thank you. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Uh, we've got Mal there from Miraburra, Victoria. Hi, Mal. Uh, okay. Oh, I should say Mal is from the Australian Narcissistic uh, Support and Recovery uh, Group. So Mal, um, that is a, a that Mal has a, a public group and a private group. So if you're looking for a, a private group, guys, uh, I'm sure Mal will put it down in the link. It's um, a, a group where you can tell all your stories to other victims and survivors, um, and it's uh, it's in Australia. But of course, there's there's people all over the world who are members. So thanks for being with us here tonight, and I'm sure uh, Mal and I'm sure Mal will put the link in the comments there, guys. So another group for you to to, to garner support from. Okay, uh, Aletha. Hi, Aletha. Aletha says, do normal people apart from narcissists say that all their exes are crazy? Uh, well, I'm, I suppose some people, you know, that, that aren't disordered may say that. Um, it's, you know, we, we can't, I guess, control what normal non-disordered people say and then there might be cause for them to say that. Um, certainly uh, not all narcissists and psychopaths and, so, and sociopaths say that every single, um, you know, ex is crazy, but certainly there will be something there around why it's that person's fault that that relationship did not work and that it's definitely not the fault of the narcissist, whether it's they're crazy, they're jealous, they've got addiction issues, you know, they're, um, they're I don't know. What else, David? <laughs> um, well, what, what victims say the same thing. Victims of narcissists, borderline sociopaths, right? All my exes were crazy. Yeah. Right? So it's not just narcissists that say that. No, it's, it's us too. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's not, it's not a prerequisite, but certainly they say it a lot um but the one thing that they they do have in common is that it's never their fault okay so whatever they want to lay upon their, their previous partner whether it's they're crazy whether they're jealous or you know um they're still madly in love with them or whatever it is they come up with the fact is it's never the narcissist's fault it's always their previous victim and the, the problem is with them and that's why the relationship didn't work out or they cheated you know they were this horrible cheater that you know betrayed them and all this kind of stuff but yeah along the lines of being crazy <laughs> yeah okay we've got uh mark silverwoods here hi mark mark says uh think of a washing machine cycle yeah great analogy it will do the same thing when you turn the washer in on every time on every wash yeah yeah, just churn you out and spit you out. Mm -hmm. Spin you like around in you. circles. And, oh, yeah. 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 yeah, exactly right, Mark. Yeah, I, um, I wanted to bring up another excuse that I hear. This is so common uh, with women especially. You know, these experiences, as you guys have noticed, it happens later in life. It, it usually, usually doesn't happen in our teens or 20s. It's not until later we attach to people, uh, seriously attachment. So something I hear from women so often is I'm just too old to leave. I'm too old. It's too late. There, there's nobody else out there for me. Who would date me at this age? You know, yeah. these kinds of this black and white thinking. And, and I don't care. You know, I, I don't feel that you're too old. I don't think that there's nobody else out there for you. But even so, you still got to leave your abuser. It's not, you, you don't stay with the abuser because your age. You don't stay with your abuser because uh, you haven't met anybody else. You can't be single. You know, these are just excuses, yeah. horrible excuses. Yeah. And it's, yeah. 
I guess that really kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier in that, you know, like you just said, it's like with age comes that, oh, I'm not going to meet anyone else. This is as good as it gets. I'm too old to leave. I don't want to be alone while I'm old. Well, the thing is you are alone. You are alone. You're, you're, it's worse than being alone. At least when you're alone with yourself, you're not being used and eventually you will build your resources up so that you're not lonely in your own company. And that's something you will always be with the narcissist is alone and lonely. Right. And, you're, and I'm going to tell you right now, your life will never get better until you make better choices. So you start making better choices. That's how you fix your life and have a better future. Yeah. yeah. It's the only way. Okay. We've got Ray there. Hi, Ray. Uh, uh, what happened there? Am I still here? Can you still see me? No, I don't see you. Yeah, I think I've done something with my camera. There, there I am. Are. Yeah, accidentally clicked on the camera instead of the comment. Good one, Nova. Okay. Um, ah, Jade says, oh, my God, you guys are so full of knowledge. It's so comforting to know we can go to you for help and advice. Oh, my God. Some, thank you, Jade. Um, yeah, I guess Dave and I are just really happy to be able to, to help you guys. Um, Linda Pritchard Havens is there what to do with a man way younger who keeps crushing on you crushing on you do you, I'm assuming that Linda might be like hoovering her back or, or trying to get her hooked in the beginning a, a, a guy who's much younger is that what you take from that David yeah I don't know I don't know if yeah. this is someone just chasing you yeah. Innocent little puppy love chasing you. Sounds like not listening to uh, your boundaries, not not respecting boundaries. So be yeah. firm, be clear. You know, always. Um, a lot of times we say go no contact and things like this, but but let the person know what you're doing. Say you be very firm and clear. Please leave me alone. Yeah. And and don't give reasons. Don't give excuses. Right. Something I have to teach people is if you want to, it's okay to just say no to somebody you don't yeah. have to say no i'm sorry N no i'm broke no i can't today <laughs> it's like I, I don't want to no leave yeah. me alone stop it's a complete, yeah. And, complete and somebody, yeah yeah harassment, no, look, yeah harassment is two words unwanted attention that's harassment people aren't allowed to harass other people go to the police if it's that bad yeah yeah yeah, yeah it, it's hard to know exactly you know, wh whether he is a narcissist, uh, Linda, just from, from what you've said. But certainly, yeah, what David said is if you are putting a boundary in place and he's not respecting it, then that's a problem. That's an issue. Yeah. Uh, you know, certainly um, if a younger man is, uh, and you use the word crushing on you, um, it, that if you have been abused in the past, that I guess that may be flattering. That may be, you know, make you feel good. Um, just be careful of whether he respects your boundaries. And that's really, really important to not be blinded by any kind of love bombing and to make sure that he respects your boundaries. Yeah. 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 People that don't, uh, people that cross boundaries and it doesn't bother them at all. They do it all the time. It, it can be very dangerous. Yeah. People like that it, can be dangerous. Setting you up, isn't it? And the thing is, they, they cross your boundaries in the beginning around things that make them look like they care about you. You know, they, they might say, oh, I, I know I told you I'd ring you tonight, but I had to ring you earlier because I've just been thinking about you all day. And this sets you up. It's by, it's testing and, and prodding and just, you know, testing the boundaries of what, what you will accept and eventually your boundaries get managed down. And this is where you have to keep those boundaries really high because, you know, at, yeah, like I said in the beginning, they will do it under, you know, oh, it's because they, you know, they, they care about you so much and they just needed to see you and, you know, all these things that make you feel good and that are flattering. But those things eventually turn into things that are, are simply all about power and control. That's right. That's why we say love yourself. You love yourself, you give yourself what you need. If you don't yep. love yourself, you don't give yourself what you need and somebody can come along and offer it for you on a silver platter and you take it, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, we've got Maxine Green. This is hi. Hi, Maxine. We've got Jessica Holland here. Hi, um, Jessica. 
Hi again to you both. I feel my mother is the narcissist in my life. Nothing I did was ever good enough. Like she was jealous of me. Oh my goodness. Um, did you want to talk to Jessica about um, the toxic, toxic narcissistic parents, David? Yeah, your mom's probably envious, not jealous of you. But, um, you know, we, we stress so much. Don't I say we, people that make videos, you know, people that in this community, we say no contact, no contact, no contact. And, and the reason we say this is when it's got gotten to a point where you're so fragile and vulnerable that all it takes is one email or, or one text message and your abuser brings you back and all of a sudden you're moving your stuff back in their house and, you know, things like this. So this is, we say no contact because obviously this means that you, you don't know how to contact your abuser and stay away from them. So if that's all it takes, if that's what you, if all you can do, that's all you can do. No contact. Um, so, but, but, but then it's, it's later down the road, I get asked, you know, when can I talk? Can I, do I go no contact with my mother forever? My father forever, your family. And, and that's up to you. Um, you've got to find a way to deal. If you want to, you have to find a way to deal with your mother. You, you have to, and, and you can't compromise what you need. Uh, yeah. you know, wisdom is to know the difference of what I can control, what I can't control, what I can do about it, what I can't do about it. And, yeah. and you've got to find that you've got to learn what you can do about it, what you can't do about it, but what you are responsible for is you and how you feel. So we can't let people make us feel bad, okay? So if your mom can't take accountability for hurting you, you have to understand that. You don't have yeah. to accept it, but you have to understand that. Yeah, and and yeah, and if you if you want to have a relationship, some kind of relationship around with your mother, then I guess it has to be on your terms, knowing Absolutely. what to expect and knowing that you can handle it. And that she will be gaslighting you and projecting and, 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 you know, trying to make you out to be the bad person and her the victim all the time. If you can handle that and you can go and see her, you know, every now and then knowing who and what she is, then you can have some kind of capacity, you know, there'll be some, you know, realm of a relationship there, but it has to be on your terms. Yeah, it does. Good point. And, and, and you know, probably never has been. So you have to learn how to do that. Yeah. Um, and, and fighting, just fighting with them, you know, just sticking up for yourself all the time. That's not healthy. <laughs> if you're sitting there fighting with someone, you have to stick up for yourself all the time. It's not working. And it, and it feeds them. Fighting, defending yourself feeds them. Yeah, if they can yeah. get you to defend yourself all the time, at least you're there fighting with them. You're giving them attention. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I, it was interesting. I was reading today uh, something that I have done um, a few posts about on Brighter Outlook is the, the acronym, the concept of DAVO, uh, which is uh, D-A-R-V-O and stands for Deny, <laughs> Accuse, Reverse, Victim and Offender. Now, all narcissists, DAVO, even parents, Jessica. So what happens is they deny that they've done anything, they won't take any accountability, they accuse you of doing it and then they reverse the victim an offender. So that's what Davo is. They will make you out to be the villain and themselves the victim. So you never give a narcissist a chance to to Davo with you. Uh, and and this is what they when you argue with them, this is what they do, don't they? They just deny and accuse you of doing it. They just project it all back onto you. So it just there's no point. Yeah, I mean, narcissistic parents don't allow autonomy. They don't they don't care how you feel, what you think. They, they expect yeah. you to feel and think the same way they do, don't they? Yeah, exactly. And, and yeah, you'll, you will never have that with a narcissistic parent. And it's something, it's really, it's really sad and hard for a lot of, um, you know, adult children, victims to come to terms with. Um, yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, if you don't heal, if you aren't healed, look, if, if you had a mother who abused you for 18 years, you need to heal from that. You need to process. You need to learn what happened. And that, and that doesn't mean just, you know, go away for a couple of weeks and come back or, um, you know, fight with your mother. Try and, and beg for some kind of uh, uh, validation. If they don't, if they never give you approval or validate you, you know, yeah. they may never. 
You may never. You, you may be constantly searching for that for the rest of your life. Yeah. You will never get that. You will never get that from a narcissist, narcissistic parent, any narcissist. You'll never get validation for what they did to you. And this is why, yeah, you need to go away and, and work out how to deal with that, that all this stuff that happened to you, you're never going to have that validated by them, never by them. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you may not. You may never. Uh, so this is something you might have to go do completely on your own. And, yeah, uh, yeah. Going, going back to them, you got to be careful. We, we, you have to be strong. You have to understand and learn the things that your parents didn't teach you. Yeah. yeah. Um, we've got Joanna Birch there. Hi, Joanna. She's replying to Linda. Says, I had one 20 years younger crush on me. No contact with the only way. Yeah. I, I think the age is irrelevant. You know, one, if, they're, if they're toxic, if they're narcissistic, um, no contact yeah, is the only way. Okay, we've got Jackie Fells on here. Hi, Jackie. Uh, uh, Jackie says, hi, I've just allowed my husband to buy a Ferrari and now I've expressed my wishes of getting into an investment property only to be told I would have to sign a contract to say if I was to divorce him, uh, I would give him a 50% share and not want more because of our children. So much for moving forward in our relationship and putting the past behind us. Um, yeah, look, it, it's really hard to comment on that, Jackie, without kind of knowing all the facts. But certainly uh, I, I'd be getting some legal advice at, at the very least. Um, and if it's, a, if it's a truly toxic, abusive relationship, I would be getting out. Um, and that's where you have to weigh up, you know, the monetary value of things, you know, what you'll be losing um, against, you know, your emotional and your, your psychological, physiological health. But, yeah, well, not enough details there for us to, to really comment. But, yeah, I, I think I'd be going and getting some legal advice with, with those kinds of demands in place. Um, what do you think, David? Um, I'd like to add, if you want to, if, if, uh, I think I got it right. She wants to put the past behind her and advance in this relationship with him. And, and yeah. something I just like to point out, and this is just opinion. Um, you know, I think relationships, we know relationships are important to human beings, but for different reasons. And, and the importance, I, I think people tend to, one or the other, they tend to stress the importance of relationships as far as emotional connection, long lasting things like this, or people tend to put importance on uh, shallow things in life uh, and, and the status of relationships and, and money and finances and things like this. I don't think it's, it's both. I don't tend to see people put importance on the same importance on both. It tends to be one or the other. Um, your husband may put importance only on money status, things like this. So if he doesn't put importance on your relationship, then how can it advance? And I think that's, I just want you to ask yourself that. Do you have a real emotional connection with this person? Yeah. And yeah. is that important to you? Yeah, yep, absolutely. Um, Mal says, Nova, are you able to place that acronym up for the people, please? Absolutely, uh, I can do that, Mal. But I'll just say it once again. The acronym is DAVO. Um, you, can, you can research it. Um, you'll be able to find it on Google. Um, and it's D-A-R-V-O. And the D said, this is what all narcissists do when you try and confront them. They will deny, they will accuse, and they will reverse victim and offender. So what they're doing is just throwing everything you're telling them back on you, denying it, denying any accountability and just projecting it straight back onto you. And that's what all narcissists do. They all DAVO. So it's just a real acronym to a real handy acronym to be aware of um, so that you don't give them, you know, the ability to be able to, to DAVO with you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, narcissists are always accused of being so competitive and that's because they won't allow themselves to be vulnerable. So they're always going to fight, 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 aggressiveness, not agreeable. Yep. yep, absolutely. Okay, we might just answer a couple more guys and then we um, we might start to wrap it up for the night. So I'll just see if there's anyone I haven't uh, answered. 
said hello to, and I know we're going to miss out people here, but okay, we've got uh, Lorraine Macbeth here. Lorraine, hi Lorraine. Lorraine says, I'm three years single since escaping him and it'll take a miracle for me to trust another man. Even though I feel heaps better in myself and my life is a lot better, I guess the mental damage is done, uh, if you know what I mean. Oh, goodness. Don't give him that. Don't give that to him, Lorraine. Um, you, you've got to be able to allow yourself to be happy. Doesn't she, David? I think a lot of people are so deflated when they come out of these relationships and they think, you know, never again, never again. But if we say that to ourselves, we're, we're giving them the narcissist more of ourselves, aren't we? We're giving them the, our ability to ever be happy again. And you have to allow yourself that, Lorraine. You, you need it, Lorraine. And, and your past negative experiences is just simply telling you that that's that, what to expect. So you need positive experiences and you'll, you'll have a different attitude. So to have these positive experiences, Lorraine, you got to try again sometime. You got to allow people in your life, okay? And you yeah. can start small, start building friendships, new friendships with people. It'll help encourage you that you're going to be okay if you allow yourself to be vulnerable and date someone again. Yeah. And, and don't forget you'll, you'll have – you'll have all this knowledge behind you and your boundaries will be so much higher that, you know, that you'll, you'll pick up red flags, you know, whereas you didn't before, you didn't have the knowledge, you didn't have the strategies. So you have to yeah, allow yourself, like David said, one day when you're, you're, you're a lot, lot stronger to, to be a little bit vulnerable. Otherwise, you know, you, 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 you can't give that back to the narcissist as well. You need to take your, your power back and, and allow yourself to be happy again. Yeah, you, you're simply afraid of getting hurt again. And, and what you're doing is you're closing off your future of any chance of being happy again. Yeah. So, and, and, and if, you, if you're so worried about being hurt, th this will extend to friends, family, not just uh, intimate partners. Trust me, you got to open yourself up again. But you don't yeah. trust other people. You're, you're simply not trusting yourself in your own judgment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You need positive experiences again. You need positive mm. experiences, yeah. And I guess, yeah, Lizzie, uh, all of that will be for you too, Lizzie. Lizzie James says, my biggest struggle is trust, trusting others and myself. And, yeah, and everything that we just said applies to you too, too Lizzie. One day when you're healed and you're at least very much stronger, you'll be able to, um, to make yourself a little bit vulnerable because when you put a wall up, they, they – David, when when they put that wall up so they don't trust anyone, yeah, they keep all the baddies out, but they also stop anyone healthy and loving from getting in, and that's the yeah, thing that's right. You know, th think about raising your, a child, and all you care about is them being safe. So you keep them in that padded room, and you don't bring anyone in the room to hurt them, and you you know really don't expose them to anything. Are they happy? Yeah. And how does that serve them? So like we get hurt in life. But the trauma you've experienced doesn't need to happen again. And you're learning, right? So what do people say? I, I didn't know. I didn't know. Well, now you know. Now you know. Now you're just, you're being held accountable and responsible for how, you're, how you feel and what people do to you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one more and then we might wrap it up. We've got um, Lisa Brown here. Hi, Lisa. Lisa says, I was married for 17 years and I didn't realize he was a narcissist. I was actually really happy till his lies about drugs made me doubt what else he was lying about. And then when I left, the real narcissism, just open it up. Uh, da, 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 da. When I left, the real narcissism started. The last seven years have been a nightmare. I now have basically no contact, but it's hard to coach my teenage boys on how to deal with their dad. Uh, they too have reached the point of no contact. The youngest lets him uh, back in just by phone. How do I coach them? I feel like it's not my job or my business to label him, diagnose him as a narcissist to them. Uh, yeah, look, we, we hear this a lot. Is, you know, how do we, we teach the kids to deal, you know, with the other parents' narcissism? And I think 
you know, I think they're starting to work it out for themselves, Lisa. And yeah, it's not your job to diagnose the other parent. Um, you know, that will only get th thrown back on you and projected back onto you that there's something wrong with their mother. What your job is, is to be the happiest, healthiest mum that you can be. And, um, and I guess provide the contrast for your kids, which clearly they are, they are seeing, the contrast between a healthy, happy home and an abusive home with the narcissist. And, and that's what you do when you leave the abuse and you become the healthiest, happiest, most appropriate parent that you can possibly be. You can't, you can't change what the narcissist does in that, in that house, but you can change what goes on in, in your house. And you can talk to them about what is appropriate behavior uh but certainly um for the most part you know the, the the narcissistic parent is going to gaslight and do all these these horrible things as long as they don't get a reaction from you the kids will see through it eventually and that's what you have to rely on do you want to add yeah. to that day yeah i think um i i, I think teaching your children you know, we don't have to teach them the labels necessarily and diagnose them, like you said. But I think it's real, real important to help your children understand what's going on. Because like we said before, if they don't understand, they're going to think it's their fault, that they're a bad child, they're not good enough, things like this. Yeah. So just keep helping them understand what's going on. You know, yeah. that, maybe that means that you need to understand more too, maybe. I don't know where you're at, but... Uh, the more you understand, the more you can, ex the better you can explain to them so they understand. Okay. Yeah. That's really important. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think it has to be done really at, and, you know, at an age appropriate level. Um, and I guess it never works, you know, bagging the other parent. We never suggest doing that because the kids love their, the other parent, no matter what, but they will be able to see what is good and bad behavior, you know, eventually, hopefully. Uh, but, you know, I guess, all you can really do is say, well, you know, when they come back and they say, well, no, mum or dad lets us do that. Well, you have your boundaries and, and you know, your rules in, in your house. And, and I guess you make it clear to the kids that um, that's not appropriate for you, but this is what we do in, in our home. And um, I guess you just need to keep providing that, that contrast, Lisa, as to what, what is a ha happy, healthy home and what is what they will see is not and also offer a, a, another healthy outlet for your for your children uh counseling you know sometimes they don't want to tell you everything sometimes they don't mm -hmm. want to talk to you about what dad yeah. did and they don't want to talk yeah. bad about dad to you so get some therapy yeah. for them yeah, it, yeah. It'll help. yeah absolutely a third party where they can yeah talk to someone with, and, and not feel like you know that they're um doing injustice you know to to their their father or their mother um and they can just talk you know without fear of, of the parent finding out something that's confidential and they can just offload yeah, yeah. but yeah, yeah. It, it's hard there is no black and white science around how to deal with it lisa and um it's it's really i guess just trying to to be the most appropriate parent and do what's best for them and um, sometimes that's really it, it's really trial and error around what works and what and what doesn't work yeah get, get advice from people have done it before always the best always best yeah okay dave we might leave it there it's been a fantastic night so yeah um guys uh david um joins us here at um on the live stream to to host the show with me every second tuesday night it's fantastic to have him here always a wealth of knowledge please uh, subscribe to David's YouTube channel for uh, regular videos on narcissistic abuse and and um, all types of um, uh, help with, with you know complex tr post traumatic stress disorder, borderline personality disorder, anything to do with um, with um, those types of things. David's always putting out information. It's called Demars Coaching. And um, think, what are you up to now, David? It must be twenty. 20 something thousand subscribers it's a lot anyway <laughs> i think 23 i think 23 oh my goodness uh, and that just goes to show what type of following david's got and, and you know just the the depth of the information that he puts out there and and how much people respect him so do yourself a favor guys and subscribe to david's channel
David, thank you so much for joining us here. Uh, and, um, yeah, I guess I shall see you in another two weeks' time on uh, Tuesday fortnight for our next live stream. Thank you always for inviting me and having me here. And thank you guys, all of you, for allowing me on here and asking questions and supporting these shows that we do. And uh, my followers, please support Nova, Brighter Outlook Counseling Service, YouTube channel, and Facebook. And I'm going to put the links down below in the description box. Please just take it there, subscribe, follow, things like this to help, okay? It's not a personal thing. Uh, it's, what, it's what we're trying to do. Get information bigger and it reaches further. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Okay, David. Have a great uh, week or two and I'll, I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Thanks. Bye. For, for joining uh, David and I here tonight. It's been a fantastic night. Um, I'm so sorry uh, for those of you I didn't get around to answering your questions, but uh, like all night, I will be here. I'm here every single Tuesday night, so I'll be here next Tuesday night to do uh, uh, the next live stream. Um, please have all your questions ready for me and um, and tell people. Put the, put the word out there that these live streams are happening and um, the more people we get in, the better and, um, you know, the more people we help and that's, I guess, what this is all about. Uh, for those of you who weren't here earlier um, and didn't hear me talking about uh, the one-on-one -on -one sessions, uh, if you would like to have a, a private uh, counselling session with me, I speak to people all over the world uh, via Skype. Uh, certainly, if you're here in Brisbane, in North Brisbane, I'd love to see you face to face here at um, Brighter Outlook um, on the north side of Brisbane. But certainly I Skype people and help them in their narcissistic abuse recovery all over the world. So if that's something that you would like to do, please, um, please just inbox me here um, for a one on one with me and I'd love to be able to support you. Um, with all of that said, guys, I'd just like to say goodbye. Uh, have a wonderful uh, week. I will see you here next Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Uh, Brisbane time, uh, Brisbane, Queensland, Australia time. So, um, yes, have a wonderful week. Remember your worth and then add tax. Bye, everyone.